नमस्कार अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज प्रशांत कुमार सिन्हा एंड विद मी इज रेशमा तिवारी ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेज ऑफ मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शुड ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर As the world fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps: wear a face mask, maintain social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. The headlines: Glacier burst causes avalanche and massive flooding in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. Rescue and relief operation by NDRF, SDRF, SSB, ITBP, and defence personnel in full swing. Large-scale protests continue in Myanmar for the second consecutive day. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken calls for accountability on human rights abuses in Xinjiang, Tibet, and Hong Kong. Registration process for the H-1B visa application for the next fiscal year will begin in the United States on the 9th of March. Nationwide Corona vaccination program launched in Bangladesh and in cricket, India were 257 for six in their first innings against England on day three of the first test in Chennai. In the northern Indian state of Uttarakhand, rescue and relief operations are in full swing in Chamoli district, where a glacial break triggered an avalanche and massive flooding of Tholi Ganga River near Rishi Ganga power project at Rani village in Tapawan area of the district this morning. The state disaster management authority Dehradun says that seven bodies have been recovered so far from Rani, Biraji. Alkapuri and Chinka villages out of 150 reported missing people 12 people have been rescued so far a report Official sources say in Dehradun that seven bodies have so far been recovered from Raini, Birji, Alkapuri and Chinka village. Sixteen persons out of 150 people earlier missing have been also rescued safely. The information says that five bridges have been damaged along with residential and office complexes of NTPC. Water level of Alaganda have stabilized. Teams of NDRF, LDRF, SLB, ITBP and defense personnel are actively participating in the operation. Three troopers are Stationed at Joshibat for rendering any required assistance. Two medical teams and two ambulances are at the spot for providing any required medical assistance. Two army helicopters are also kept at standby. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Tiven Singh Rawat told media persons in Dehradun after visiting disaster affected areas that Prime Minister Narendra Modi assured all possible help to the state government. Chief Minister announced four lakh rupees each next to kin of deceased. Raghavesh Pandey, AIR News, Dehradun. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviewed the situation in Uttarakhand. He spoke to Chief Minister Trivendra Singh Rawat and other top officials addressing a public rally in Haldia in West Bengal. The Prime Minister said he is constantly monitoring the situation in Uttarakhand. जो माँ गंगा का उद्गम स्थल है, वो राज्य उत्तराखंड इस समय आपदा का सामना कर रहा है। एक ग्लेशियर टूटने की वजह से वहाँ नदी का जलस्तर बढ़ गया, नुकसान की खबरें धीरे-धीरे आ रही हैं। मैं उत्तराखंड के मुख्यमंत्री श्री त्रिवेंद्र रावत जी, भारत सरकार के गृहमंत्री जी, एनडीआरएफ के अफसर, उन सब से निरंतर संपर्क में हूँ। वहाँ पर राहत और बचाव का कार्य पुरजोश करने का प्रयास चल रहा है। लोगों को सुरक्षित स्थानों पर ले जाया जा रहा है। the Prime Minister has approved an ex gratia of 2 lakh rupees each from, from the PMNRE for the next of kin of those who have lost their lives in the tragic avalanche. Rupees 50,000 will be given to those seriously injured. The flash flood due to the avalanche has destroyed houses situated at the riverbank side. Several people working at the Rishi Ganga hydroelectric power project were reported missing soon after the incident. Five bridges have been damaged along with the residential and office complex of NTPC. The water level of Alaknanda River has stabilized. Teams of NDRF, SDRF, the SSB, ITBP and defense personnel are actively participating in the rescue and relief operations. The Indian Air Force has also deployed Deployed its choppers for rescue operations. Two army helicopters are also kept on standby. 
Talking to All India Radio News, Director General of National Disaster Response Force, NDRF, SN Pradhan said that all teams of ITBP, Army, State Disaster Response Force and the State Police will work through the night to ensure the safety of every missing person in Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand Chief Minister Trivendra Singh Rawat took stock of the situation after reaching near Raini village in Tapawan. Talking to reporters, Mr. Rawat said that the water level has receded and the center is in constant touch with him and has assured all possible help in rescue operations. President Ramnath Kovin has said that he is deeply worried about the glacier burst near Joshimat, Uttarakhand, that caused destruction in the region. In a tweet, Mr. Kovin said he is praying for well-being and safety of people. He said he is confident that rescue and relief operations on ground are progressing well. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said that he is praying for the safety of all those affected by the flash flood caused by a glacier burst in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. Mr. Naidu said he is sure that the state and the central government are trying their best to mitigate the crisis. French President Emmanuel Macron expressed solidarity with India over the Uttarakhand flash floods. In a tweet, Mr. Macron conveyed that their thoughts are with the people who have been affected by the glacier burst and their families. Moving on to the neighborhood, large-scale protests continue in Myanmar for the second consecutive day after the military takeover of power from the civilian government of Aung San Suu Kyi on February the 1st. A large crowd gathered in Yangon, known as the commercial capital of Myanmar, on Sunday to protest against the military takeover. The protesters demanded restoration of democracy and release of political prisoners, including Aung San Suu Kyi, Depot's President Win Mint, and other political activists. According to reports, it is the largest protest since the 2007 Saffron Revolution that helped spur a transition to democracy. The demonstrators, demonstrations have been largely peaceful in the country, with no reports of clashes being reported. The internet connectivity in the country has been restored on Sunday afternoon after it was shut down on Saturday by the order of the government. Earlier on Friday, the military appointed Foreign Affairs Minister U Wuna Mong Win and Minister of International Cooperation U Koko Weng held a diplomatic briefing via video conferencing on the recent political developments in Myanmar. They reiterated the charge that Tatmado found evidence of rigging of 10.4 million votes in the November 8 elections last year. They told the diplomatic community that the Tatmado understands the concerns about the democratic transition in Myanmar, but stability, the rule of law, prosperity and well-being of the people are prerequisites of democratic transition, said the official website of the government. Bangladesh launched its nationwide vaccination program in Dhaka on Sunday. The launch of the mass vaccination program follows the vaccine inauguration on the 27th of January by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Our special correspondent in Dhaka has sent this report. The nationwide launch of the COVID-19 vaccination program in Dhaka today marked an important milestone in the country's fight against the corona pandemic. Launching the mass vaccination program, Health Minister Zahid Malek said that the vaccine was safe and people should not listen to rumors about it. To enhance public confidence, several dignitaries, including judges of the Supreme Court, took the vaccine jab today. Zahid Malik said that the vaccination program will continue throughout the year. The vaccination program has been rolled out at more than a thousand hospitals and health centers across Bangladesh. More than 2,400 teams of health workers are engaged in the vaccination program in Dhaka and other parts of the country. More than 3.25 lakh people have registered for the vaccination program across the country till Saturday. The government of Bangladesh has signed an agreement for the purchase of 30 million doses of the Oxford University AstraZeneca vaccine from the Serum Institute of India. Out of it, 5 million doses arrived in Bangladesh last month. India also gifted 2 million doses of the vaccine to Bangladesh. Rajesh Jha, World News, All India Radio, Dhaka. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. 
In today's Hotspot segment, we are focusing on India's efforts to heal the world through its Vaccine Maitri initiative. Vaccine Maitri literally translates into vaccine friendship. More than 22 countries have requested India to provide COVID-19 vaccines, while millions of vaccine doses have already been dispatched to the nations from Bhutan to Brazil and from Maldives to Mauritius. All this has been possible under the mission Vaccine Maitri initiative launched by the Government of India. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought many a challenge before the world, but it is said that every challenge brings along an opportunity. India is now producing vaccines not only to meet its domestic use, but providing it to its neighbors and partner nations true to its spirit of Vasudhaev Kutumbakam, which means the world is one family. India responded to the call of humanity when Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, as early as in May 2020, stated at the NAM conference how India is ensuring the medical supplies to the countries across the globe at the peak of the pandemic. India is regarded as a pharmacy of the world, especially for affordable medicines. Despite our own needs, we have ensured medical supplies to over 123 partner countries. External Affairs Minister of India, Dr. S. J. Shankar, on another occasion, reminded the global community about India's role as a pharmacy of the world. The health and pharmaceutical sector has come in the spotlight recently in the context of the pandemic. As the pharmacy of the world, India was able to provide assured supplies of high-quality pharma products in difficult circumstances, in addition to giving life-saving medicines and protective gear to around 150 countries, 27 of them in Latin America and the Caribbean region. The Vaccine Maitri Initiative, in fact, is the logical culmination of India's role as a pharmacy of the world. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, scientific community, government agencies and research fraternity were galvanized into action and two Made in India vaccines came to the fore more effective, safe and cost efficient. India has approved the shipment of COVID-19 vaccine to Cambodia and plans to supply Mongolia and Pacific Island states. On Sunday, 500,000 doses of the vaccines were supplied to Afghanistan. The spokesperson for the External Affairs Ministry of India, Anurag Shivastav, elaborated on the upcoming phases of India's Vaccine Matri Initiative to supply Made in India COVID-19 vaccines to neighbors and key partners. We have so far supplied vaccines to Bhutan, Maldives, Bangladesh, Nepal, Myanmar, Mauritius, Seychelles, Sri Lanka, the UAE, Brazil, Morocco, Bahrain, Oman, Egypt, Algeria, Kuwait and South Africa. And the supplies which have been made under grant assistance amount to 56 lakh doses and supplies which have been made on a commercial basis they amount to over 100 lakh doses. So this is the list of countries we have already supplied on grant as well as on commercial basis and our external supplies of vaccine is an ongoing process depending on availability and domestic requirements. In terms of countries where our supplies will reach, the next set of supplies are for CARICOM countries, which is the Caribbean, Pacific Island states, Nicaragua, Afghanistan and Mongolia. After setting its priorities, ensuring the supplies for its own requirements, India embarked on its mission towards humanity. Just days after India launched the world's largest vaccination drive against COVID-19, India sent its first consignment of COVID-19 vaccinations to Bhutan. Bhutan's leadership and the citizens welcomed the warm-hearted initiative Ambassador of India to Bhutan. Ms. Ruchira Kamboj, speaking to All India Radio, shared the sentiments in Bhutan. Importantly, India has made good on its promise of standing shoulder to shoulder with Bhutan and will continue to do so in the coming months. The leadership and public of Bhutan has been deeply touched by India's gesture. The Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Lote Shering, has called this a display of altruism at its best. The Prime Minister of Bhutan has also made an important point, and I quote, it is of unimaginable value when precious commodities are shared even before meeting your own needs, as opposed to giving out only after you have enough, calling this altruism at its best. Thank you, Prime Minister Lote, for your kind and gracious words, which are deeply appreciated. So truly, the dispatch of the vaccine was a testimony to India's commitment of neighborhood first and its leadership in the global fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Shortly after sending the vaccines to Bhutan, rays of hope in the form of COVID vaccines landed on the beautiful country of Maldives 
as India shipped its first consignment of COVID vaccines to Mali. Indian High Commissioner in Maldives, Sanjay Sudhir, told All India Radio about the positive vibes it created in the island nation. It was indeed a historic day for Maldives, as Maldives was the first country to receive Indian vaccine, and that also so early in January. Within 96 hours of the rollout of vaccine in India, they were not really expecting it, but it happened with the support of the Indian government. This was clearly an example of India's generosity and also reflects the depth of our bilateral relations. There is no doubt that Maldives occupies a very, very special place in the foreign policy of India. The India First foreign policy of Maldives is fully reciprocated by the neighborhood first policy of India, both in letter and spirit. The world took note of India's magnanimity in the face of adversity. The Secretary General of the United Nations lauded India's initiatives to supply vaccines to other countries. He hailed India's vaccine manufacturing capabilities as an asset to the world. I know that uh, in India there is a very high level of production, both of uh, Indian developed vaccines and uh, I think a very important perspective of also others uh, and we are in contact with Indian institutions for that and, and we strongly hope that uh, India will have all the instruments uh, that are necessary to play a major role in making sure that uh, a global vaccination campaign becomes possible. I think that uh, the production capacity of India is one of the best assets the world has today and I hope the world understands that it must be fully used. Following this, India turned its attention to Mauritius, the African island nation which plays a prominent role in India's Indo-Pacific partnerships. High Commissioner of India to Mauritius, Mrs. Nandini Singla, told AIR that our age-old historical connect will get a boost with this development. Mauritians are highly appreciative and grateful that Mauritius is one of only seven priority partner countries of India which are receiving the vaccine in the first phase. And the fact that India has extended this humanitarian gesture barely a week after we started our own vaccination program for a population of 1.3 billion people is also seen as telling testimony to the special affection and importance attached to Mauritius by India. It has also reinforced the message of India's altruism and India's image as a friend in need reflecting India's ethos of Vasudhai Vakutumbakam and the importance we attach to our key partners under our neighborhood first policy. Reaching out beyond its immediate neighbors, India provided vaccines to Bahrain. The ambassador of Bahrain to India, Abdul Rahman Al Kaud, said this proves the strength of the long standing friendship between the two countries. I would like to express our sincere appreciation to the leadership, government and people of Republic of India for their continuous collaboration and effort to strengthen the bilateral relation which continues to deliver on the aspiration of both countries. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of India share historical and ever-growing friendship, my, my dear. Bahrain appreciates and welcomes the Republic of India Corporation in overcoming challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. Former Indian Ambassador Ashok Sajjanhar told AIR that the initiative underlines the significance of India's vaccine maitri initiative in the larger context of India's leadership role in today's world. In an exclusive interview with All India Radio. The fact that India has provided vaccines to a large number of countries while its own vaccine program domestically has been going on, has been looked at with great admiration and has been applauded by a large number of countries. Basically, I think there are two aspects. One is it is the actualization of the neighborhood first policy. Prime Minister Modi, when he had come to office in 2014, this was uh, one of the most uh, significant uh, precepts of his foreign policy to improve relations with the neighbors. Secondly, it is also an element, a part of the Act East policy. So Myanmar comes in. Myanmar is a very important neighbor, a very significant neighbor. So in that context also, India has gone out of its way to provide, while there is so much of uh, what is known as vaccine nationalism, so notwithstanding all that, India has supplied to these countries. As a pharmacy of the world, Mr. Sajjanhar says India is meeting its responsibilities to humanity as had been affirmed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the 75th anniversary of the establishment of the UN. India is very rightly known as the pharmacy of the world. India was already supplying medicines as well as medical equipment to a large number of countries to deal with COVID-19. As far as vaccines are concerned, 
India produces more than 60% of the vaccines all over the world. So it has uh, a particular responsibility in meeting the needs and requirements of the world. In fact, while speaking at the 75th anniversary of the establishment of the United Nations, Prime Minister Modi had said that when our vaccines are ready, and this he had said in October 2020, that when our vaccines are ready, then India will not only take care of its own people, but our vaccines will be used to serve the whole humanity. The former ambassador described the vaccine Maitri as a synergy between India's hard and soft power winning praise from around the world. Vaccine Maitri mission is a very important element of India's foreign policy. It fully meets with the ethos of uh, India's foreign policy as has been enunciated on a number of occasions by Prime Minister Modi. In addition to that, I think it needs to be seen as a very synergetic mix between soft power and hard power. It will definitely advance the geopolitical and geoeconomic interests of India. But in addition to that, it will also enhance uh, the soft power of India. So it can be said that it is a truly a smart power in operation that uh, India has decided to reach out to provide uh, succor to the whole world, which is uh, dealing, which is battling with the coronavirus uh, pandemic. India is uh, making sure that it meets its domestic requirements, it meets its domestic concerns, and then it supplies to, the, to all the other countries. But uh, the fact that India has uh, stepped out and uh, provided a hand of uh, help to all countries in need has been noticed and has been very favorably commented upon. So this is a very strong step in advancing and promoting India's uh, interests of uh, good relations with a large number of our friends and partners. While India's generosity is already drawing plaudits from people, leaders and organizations alike from around the world, India is not resting on its laurels. At a time when the world is witnessing the specter of vaccine nationalism, India has emerged as a beacon of hope to ensure an equitable and affordable access to COVID-19 vaccine. In Italy, Premier-designate Mario Draghi secured preliminary support from two key parties to form a new government on Saturday. With this, the three days of talks with representatives of Italian political parties has ended. The new government will be in charge of deciding how to spend more than 200 billion euros in European Union funds to help relaunch Italy's pandemic-stricken economy. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has pressed for accountability on human rights abuses in Xinjiang, Tibet and Hong Kong while talking to senior Chinese diplomat Yang Jiechi. According to reports, Mr. Blinken made clear that the U.S. will defend its national interests, stand for demo democratic values and hold Beijing accountable for its abuses of the international system. He added that Beijing will be held accountable for its efforts to threaten stability in the Indo-Pacific, including across the Taiwan Strait and its undermining of the rules-based international system. Blinken also urged Chinese officials to condemn the current military coup in Myanmar. The diplomat has previously signaled his stance in a Twitter post, terming the arrest of pro-democracy demonstrators in Hong Kong as an assault on universal rights. He further asserted that the Biden-Harris administration will stand with the people of Hong Kong and against Beijing's crackdown on democracy. In the United States, registration process for the H-1B visa application for the next fiscal year will begin on the 9th of March and the successful applicants through a computerized draw of lots would be notified by the 31st of March. The notification by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, comes a day after the Biden administration announced that it will continue with the traditional lottery system to issue the much sought-after work visa to foreign professionals. The H-1B visa is a non-immigrant visa that allows U.S. companies to employ foreign workers in specialty occupations that require theoretical or technical expertise. The technology companies depend on it to hire tens of thousands of employees each year from countries like India. The successful applicants will be able to join their new jobs in the U.S. on the 1st of October when the American fiscal year starts. 
The U.S. CIS can issue a maximum of 65,000 H-1B visas in a year. It can also issue another 20,000 H-1B visas to foreign students who have completed higher studies from a U.S. university in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM subjects. China released a new anti-monopoly guidelines on Sunday that target internet platforms, a move tightening the existing restrictions faced by the country's top tech companies. The new rules formalize an earlier anti-monopoly draft law release in November. The rules issued by the market regulator bar companies from a range of behaviors, including forcing merchants to choose between the country's top internet players, a long-time practice in the market. The notice also said it will stop companies from price-fixing, restricting technologies and using data and algorithms to manipulate the market. China has in recent months started to tighten scrutiny of its tech giants, reversing a once lesser fair approach. In December, regulators launched an antitrust investigation into Alibaba Group following the dramatic suspension of the $37 billion initial public offering plan of its payment affiliate Ant Group. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. Moving on to sports, in cricket, India were 257 for 6 in their first innings against England at Stumps on day 3 of the first test at M.A. Chidambaram Stadium in Chennai. Ravi Chandran Ashwin with 8 runs and Washington Sundar with 33 were at the crease when Stumps were drawn this evening. Rishabh Pant scored 91, while Cheteshwar Pujara contributed 73. The hosts are still trailing by 321 runs. For the visitors, Dom Best claimed four wickets, while Jofra Archer bagged two. Earlier, England were all out for 578 runs after resuming their first innings at the overnight score of 555 for eight. Yesterday, English skipper Joe Root became the first batsman in the history of Test cricket to score a double century in his 100th Test. For India, Jasprit Bumrah and Ravi Chandran Ashwin claimed three wickets each and Ishant Sharma and Shahbaz Nadeem scalped two each. In rugby, France got their Six Nations title bid off to the perfect start as they scored seven tries in a crushing 50-10 bonus point victory over a youthful Italy side in the championship opener in Rome on Saturday. In football, a six-goal thriller between Manchester United and Everton ended in a draw on Saturday. Elsewhere, Rafael Varane scored twice as Real Madrid win 2-1 against Huesca in the Spanish La Liga. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Japan Times report Rights of the U.S., Japan, Australia and India are working first meeting of their leaders under the Quad framework. Washington Post reports senior Democrats are set to unveil a $3,000 per, per child plan in their relief package. The Wall Street Journal writes that a boom in oil markets has pushed crude prices to their highest levels since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. The Guardian reports that an arrest warrant was served on UK law firm over alleged one MDB assets. And according to the South China Morning Post, global warming may have started before the Industrial Revolution. A quick look at the headlines once again. Glacial burst causes avalanche and massive flooding in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. Rescue and relief operation by NDRF, SDRF, SSP, ITBP and defense personnel in full swing. Large-scale protests continue in Myanmar for the second consecutive day. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken calls for accountability on human rights abuses in Xinjiang, Tibet and Hong Kong. Registration process for the H-1B visa application for the next fiscal year will begin in the U.S. on the 9th of March. Nationwide coronavirus vaccination program launched in Bangladesh and in cricket India were 257 for six in their first innings against England on day three of the first test in Chennai. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let's listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnavajan, by artists from Belgium.
And with that, we end this bulletin. See you at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.